guide. Oh, okay. okay, awesome. And we are now recording, so y'all are good to go. I'm going to um, mute and turn my camera off. And um, thanks. Okay, well, we're glad to be with you today. We're going to talk about the streaming media services that the library offers. Um, it's very popular with our instructors and students and a big part of the teaching experience in many of the subject areas. And UNCG, we have a, a variety of film and music platforms. So over the last few months, Michelle and I, along with Christine and Katherine Heilman, have been working to update our streaming media LibGuide. Um, Kathy Rothamel also helped by reviewing some of the Swank digital information for the LibGuide. So we based the new LibGuide on our experience of working with instructors and students, and we wanted to try to provide an easy way to find answers in our new guide to questions that are often asked. So um, you can find the LibGuide under the ROI LibGuides link on the library webpage, and it's under additional res research and resources guides. Um, so after we got all our information together, Michelle has designed our LibGuide, which is going to be our visual for today. And um, she took all the information we discussed and will give a preview of the new guide as we go through this webinar. Um, hi, y'all. Um, since I also wanted to add to that, we'll be talking about some license legalese. Um, just wanted to point out for the official record, we're not lawyers, so um, don't take this as professional legal advice. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is the homepage. Um, I linked it in the chat um, for those who want to uh, take a look themselves. Um, so on the homepage, one of the feedback or the major, I guess, sticking point is um, to make it more um, visually appealing. Um, and uh, easy to navigate um, and to condense a lot of the information um, because while the information that was on um, the LibGuide was useful for when we were uh, starting platforms and as changes went along, um, now that, you know, they're all established, um, we, you know, don't necessarily need a whole tab for some of those things. So, um, so we included a, uh, you know, a welcome box, and this chat box is interactable. And um, if you have, if anybody has any questions about streaming media, it will go to the reference desk. Um, there's links here for that go to the A to Z list on the databases page, um, where you can filter out for the films. Um, although some of it's like not comprehensive uh, for some of the platforms, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, and we also want to include the music research guide because they have a lot of information um, on streaming uh, music resources. Um, we also wanted to highlight uh, the what's the most popular platforms um, at UNCG uh, based on statistics. And that is Academic Video Line, which is uh, through um, Alexander Street Press, Canopy, and Swank. Um, and and we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. Um, and then we wanted to highlight like almost kind of like sub platforms. Most of these are um, on Avon, um, but there are some ones for other platforms like DocuSeek and um, Ambrose, which you can see. And then I thought it was important to still have a box for um, audio and music. Um, so this includes um, audio streaming and um, and some music video as well. Um, and then all the way down here at the bottom <laughs> is the non-library resources, um, which do not require a UNCG login. Um, film search aggregators, just, you know, to see, oh, well, I couldn't find my film on any of these platforms. Let me see where it is available. Um, some pay-per-view services uh, where you can rent um, a film um, for a small fee. And then of course, free, the free tab, there's a lot of information here. So I kind of included the ones that I thought would be most useful to patrons. Um, but yeah, so 
there's obviously more that people could use. Um, but I didn't want it to be like too, too long. Um, and then just tabs for instructor facts, um, which I'll talk a little bit later, and then public performance rights, which um, Anne will talk about. OK, I'm going to talk about some of the different streaming platforms and um, all of these films that are on these platforms, everybody in the class or in, uh, unlimited amount of users can watch it at the same time. Um, sometimes I'm asked that question. So um, as Michelle said, the three uh, platforms with the highest usage are um, in a box by themselves. The first one is Academic Video Online or Avon. And this um, platform hosts a variety of subject areas. As Michelle said, under the films at UNCG slideshow below this box, um, a lot of the different channels and collections in Avon's are available through those links. Avon has a lot of channels, they call them, or collections. And they, they're like black studies, fashion, dance, environmental studies, health issues, um, LGBTQ+, Latin American studies. Um, there are numerous films in each of these each of these channels or collections. So when I search for a requested film and I discover the film is part of one of these channels or collections, I'll share the direct link to the film that was requested, but I'll also link to this channel. So that's um, maybe a patron or an instructor would be interested in some of the other films that are available. Um, this platform also works very hard to provide instructor resources that I can share with anybody who would want to know more. Um, they've just released some video interaction features where you can embed discussion prompts, multiple choice, polling into the videos to access real-time analytics. Um, there are libguides and instructions for how to use these features. One collection that we really want to highlight is Film Platform Films. And this is a, a global selection of films from very uh, numerous filmmakers. Some of the films recently added, one is Battleground, which is about the abortion and politics issue, and Invisible Extinction, which is about the race to save our vanishing microbes. So there's a lot of good selections on the academic video online. Everybody knows about Canopy, <laughs> so they offer a wide variety of contemporary films by a lot of the really major film distributors. I often see a lot of distributors that are on other platforms ending up on Canopy. They have a wide range. Um, some of the films most popular at UNCG are A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, Moonlight, and The Mask You Live In. These films are requested by instructors to be licensed. Last year, we added the smart PDA plan to our Canopy um, platform, and this helps to eliminate some of our mediation of film requests. A requested film or a licensed film will remain on the Canopy platform even after the license expires. So that it's always available to be viewed. And if the film is then a viewed four times, another one-year license is triggered. Then after all the film, the film is licensed, it's available to anyone in the UNCG community to view it. Our long-term goal is to make the Canopy title searchable and accessible through our library catalog. So we're still working on that plan. The last one of the most popular is Swank. Swank offers films, more feature films, com uh, documentaries, TV shows, foreign films, but only faculty can request the Swank films. And as you'll see on the instructor's FAQ page, there is a request form um, link. The films are licensed for one year, and the Swank representative will reply to the faculty directly by email with the access information that's needed. That's why I always um, encourage the faculty to submit the form so that they can be in the email chain. Once films are licensed, anyone in the UNCG community can view the films. 
But we do have some other film platforms that are very valuable to use too, not just these three top ones. Um, DocuSeek is a film platform that has primarily documentaries on a variety of social and environmental issues. One of their new films, Stuart Udall, The Politics of Beauty, was recently used in our sustainability film series. Um, another platform is the Digital Theater Plus. This offers full-length films of stage performances of classic and modern films and plays, along with interviews and workshops with playwrights, directors, designers, actors, musicians, and anyone involved in the playmaking process. Um, their dramatic text readings, poetry performance, lesson plans, and there's also a wide variety uh, selection of musical theater, Broadway plays, and interviews. So this is a very valuable resource for our arts um, areas, the departments, and theater. Um, another one is Feature Films for Education. This platform provides only 20th Century Fox films. The 20th Century Fox films are not available on Swank, so this is a good a additional platform to have. Um, some of the popular films used at UNCG are 12 Years a Slave, in Time and Hidden Figures are on this platform. Films on Demand is a platform that is provided to us through NC Live. The films on this are Shakespeare, current issue documentaries, and many of the PBS programs. And then Michelle mentioned the audio and music um, slideshow down at the bottom here. Uh, this is part of the music research guide and it has a lot of good resources for students. Um, one new resource that was recently added is called Quest TV, which is available from the Avon platform, and it offers a lot of performances and documentaries from a lot of different areas of music, like jazz sessions, Elvis Presley, hip hop, and a lot more. So it's a good resource to look at. So as you can see, we try to cover a lot of different um, disciplines and try to provide as many films and as we can through these different subscriptions. Okay, and um, now I'm going to talk about the instructor facts tab. Um, so one of the questions based off of the feedback from Anne and Christine when um, they've done various webinars um, and presentations was how to discover streaming media. Um, most, except for uh, titles on Swank and um, Canopy currently, um, can be provided via uh, the our, our catalog. Um, and if it's not, um, and you, we have access to something, um, email ER help, and they'll fix the link. Um, <laughs> and um, also currently, our uh, I forgot to mention um, things that our institution currently um, host. There are some films we uh, purchase title by title that we host the file, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, someday, we'll hope to have these included in the catalog as well. Um, but here, I on this uh, left-hand um, column, I really wanted to highlight, like, I guess, the basic, how do I find, um, how do you find films? Um, so that's what this, uh, this one is. And then for occasionally to direct uh, instructors to place requests through uh, digital um, Swank, um, this catalog link right here will go direct to like kind of like an overarching everything that Swank has to offer kind of um, catalog where um, faculty and um, instructors can place requests um, for films that we don't have. And if you want to um, discover films that, you know, our library does have license, um, you click this link right here and it'll take to, um, to uh, our instance of Swank. Um, and on the home page, that's where um, also the Swank link will direct you to. Um, so this is just some basic information about Swank here. And, um, and they also have a really good instructional video um, that you can play uh, 
that faculty, you know, anybody could play um, <laughs> for uh, video information on assigning and sharing films. Um, and then we also get questions occasionally about embedding and sharing um, library videos. So um, on various, depending on the platform, there are various <laughs> icons um, that you can choose to uh, get links and embed code, um, et cetera. And um, these links here for more in depth for how do you put, insert them into Canvas, um, these links here will go to the Canvas community site, which I believe has a pretty good um, like instructions on how to embed your films in your Canvas. Um, and then shout out to Sam, <laughs> threw her name in here. Um, if uh, if uh, faculty members are still having trouble, they can um, contact her for more help. Um, and of course, another link to the chat box. Um, and then also the first legalese is um, we wanted to put something in here about individual versus educational license. Um, some instructors think, oh, I can just show some random Netflix documentary for everybody in my class. Unfortunately, Netflix um, says in their terms of use that, no, you can't do that. Um, so, which is why we have all of these platforms because we are an educational institution. Um, but they can assign films that are on these platforms. And these are just some of them. It's not like a comprehensive picture of every major streaming platform out there. Um, but they can feel free to assign individual, like, you know, hey, go watch this title on your own time on these platforms. And that's fine, just as long as you're not displaying it to a group of people. Um, and that's pretty much it for this page. Um, so, Anne, you want to talk about public performance rights? Yes. OK. Um, this we hope this page will answer a lot of the questions for how films can be used outside of the classroom setting. Um, public performance rights means that the film is available for campus use only with no admission charge, is not to be promoted to the public, and PPR is required for campus student and organizational events or for film series. We're very fortunate several of our streaming film platforms allow PPR with their films. Avon does except for films that are on the film platform. Um, then, um, distributor. So all of their films are PPR. DocuSeq allows PPR, which I know Sarah Dorsey used a lot of their films for her sustainability programming. And then Films on Demand, those allow PPR. A lot of the Canopy films will allow PPR. And if you look at the LibGuide below Canopy down at the bottom right hand side, there's a little PPR box. If you are looking up a film in Canopy, um, below the play button for the film title and all, you you can look to see if there's a PPR symbol. If there is, then you can use that in these campus groups or film um, festivals series. Um, Swank films are not available for public performance rights. Licensing must be requested and the requester which I can help them with, contact Swank, and then they or their academic department have to pay a fee for the screening rights to that film. Um, some of the streaming films and DVDs we've purchased in the past do allow public performance rights because often when we purchase at the educational price, which is a lot higher than the personal individual price, it will include the public performance rights. So if a film is requested for a film series or an event on campus and our license to the film does not include public performance rights, then that group will be asked to cover the cost of the screening. And I can get them in contact with the, pers the contact person for that um, purpose. So we hope we've answered a lot of the questions about public performance rights with this page. Um, we also, Beyond this, we also um, 
order other films. It's always great when the films needed by patrons are on one of these platforms because there's a lot of good options. However, often films are requested and must be purchased digitally from an individual film producer or distributor. This process can be as simple as going to an established film distributor who provides easy payment, closed captioning, digital sharing for the purchase of the film through um, their website. But at other times, it, there's a challenge in providing a requested film. Um, I have a lot of instances where somebody will go to a conference and come back wanting the film that they viewed or receive an email, see a news article about a film. We even had one person who watched a film on, a, on an airplane flight to China and wanted us to get the film that they had viewed. So these films can be more difficult and time intensive to find. And then I have to negotiate with the film producers um, to try to purchase the film. And often these, when they're outside of the United States, it gets more challenging because we have to do a lot of emailing. We have to get what is the educational pricing and the licensing. We might have to get license agreements signed by us and the producer, distributor. We have to try to get the digital film in a in a format that we can host easily. And we always strive to get the closed captioning for films. So some of the challenges with this purchase type of purchasing are sometimes the film producers are new to marketing and selling their films. They're often individuals that are involved in their next film production and they need funds to continue their work. Um, they haven't really established pricing or licensing procedures for their film, selling their films yet. I mean, I've even had people ask me, well, how do I set this up? What do you think is a good price? And, you know, that's not something for me to decide. <laughs> so, um, there can also be a delay in obtaining a film as, a, as the producer is in negotiations with a film distributor to market their film. So an example is like last year, a campus group was interested in human rights films for a film series, and they were interested in the situation in Ukraine, which was very current. Well, a lot of the films they were looking at were new and several were up for film awards and they're just difficult to purchase because they're so new and they're just, the distributors are just getting started marketing their films. And now, as I thought would happen, I'm seeing these films available from some of the different film distributors. So last year we um, negotiated film projects purchases for producers in Germany, in Palestine, in the UK, in the Netherlands, and in Japan. Um, so this happens quite often. So I do the part where I try to get the film purchased and the licensing and get it here on, in digital format. Then I have to, I turn it over to Michelle <laughs> to handle how we can ho host this uh, locally. Yeah, uh, so after Ian does all the hard part, um, I get to attempt to um, download the film from um, however they deliver it. They delivered it through Vimeo, Dropbox, all kinds of different websites. Some of them kind of sketch, I think, with ads everywhere. Um, <laughs> but uh, once I am able to get a digital copy of it, um, Ideally, with closed captionings, I am a huge advocate for closed captionings or some kind of English subtitles. Um, and sometimes all that's available is a transcript, which is, you know, not ideal, but better than nothing, right? Um, then I have to attach the closed captioning file also to the digital um, file. And depending on the file and the format of the closed captioning file, that could be kind of a challenge, but I figured out a way to do it uh, via Handbrake. Handbrake is an awesome tool. Um, and then like previously we have hosted these films on Google Drive uh, before I came up to technical services and was burning them from um, DVDs. Uh, Cheryl uh, was involved with that. And then it got turned over to me once I took on my current role in technical services. Um, 
but now, thank goodness, thank you, almost COVID, one positive thing, I guess, that coming out of COVID is that most of, if not all of any film purchases come in a digital file now. Um, so I do not have to go through the, um, t the tediousness of trying to burn a copy on what may or may not be a copyright protected DVD. Um, so initially we were hosting them on Google Drive. Um, and unfortunately, uh, people could find ways around, easily find ways around of downloading it despite the settings. Um, so when I took over, I decided um, to move it to Box since it's a little bit more secure. Um, and that has worked for, for us for several years. Um, but now with our um, wonderful my Microsoft migration, we've had to find a new home for these films. Um, so we discovered that they, um, with our Avon subscription, um, we do have access to upload our locally hosted uh, film files there and it's secure, it has the proxy, It um, you can add closed captioning um, files to it um, already burned in or like through a separate file. Um, and I am currently in the process of uploading these films and I can put the link into the chat for those who want to take a look at what I already have uploaded. Um, and then once we finish the upload process, ideally we'll get them in the catalog, hopefully, um, working with Marcy um, and Catherine Heilman to get to make that possible. Um, so we're really excited for this um, mm -hmm. and looking for cover art has been probably my favorite part of this process because art um, and that's pretty much the short and dirty version of how I uh, get the films available and um, distributed to the instructors so they can share with their classes. Um, and now I will turn it back over to Anne. Yeah, thank you. And Michelle's worked very hard on this and we're very, she and I are very excited that these films are now going to be discoverable, that there'll be links that can be, the instructors can easily um, find these each semester because um, they, a lot of these films are used over and over again and we keep adding new ones. We just added one this week. So um, we're very excited about this um, option for us. So hopefully this new media streaming media guide will help answer questions to needed for needed information. And um, does anybody have any questions or comments? Or feedback. Or feedback is yeah. always welcome. Um, because again, as Ian said at the beginning, we come from a technical services aspect. So we just only care about, you know, making sure the links work and getting it up there um, and accessible. So um yes any feedback whether you hate it love it whatever please let us know i see the chat this is you're getting a lot of praise in the chat um well, thank you so um, Suzanne is asking for the LibGuide link again. Oh, yeah, I have it up right here. So, okay. um, And then um, I have a question about Swank on the LibGuide. So um, when I go to the Swank link on the LibGuide, if you like click on digital campus via Swank. Um, what, from the homepage? Oh, from or? the homepage. Okay. Yes. So, you know, people have to log in to search um, the catalog. Is that correct? Or am I not understanding? I usually like look and see if it's available first um, on their like public web page. Um, but am I, is this the better way? And would I tell, would I like log in each time? 
I believe if you click on the student, for example, like it okay. should just pop up. Yeah. Okay. Um, pretty much only faculty or instructors, you know, or even, you know, us as librarians um, can create a login. Um, and that's pretty much only, I think, and Anne, correct me if I'm wrong, is to place requests um, for new films to be added um, to our current collection. So like, you know, when I search in here for stuff, it only shows the stuff we have licensed, right? Yes. So like, um, you know, if they were asking like, oh, do they have this to be licensed? Would I still go to the like Swank website, the like Swank digital, digital campus Swank, you know, like the public one that- Yeah, yeah you would still, Google? yeah, you'll have to go to the public one, which- she yeah Michelle put it on the instructor FAQs yeah mm -hmm. under yeah, that box that. the very first link access Swank's catalog that's the link you're looking for yeah this one right here access Swank's catalog um okay. and I can copy and put that into the chat if you need a bookmark it access um, Swank's. okay sorry yeah I didn't it's see this that. one right here no it's okay so the first one yeah okay so that's what we mm -hmm. already have licensed if they're mm -hmm. looking to see what to license if we don't already have it, they would go there. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Swank has a way that you can just go into their their catalog and and do it yourself, requesting films. But since we only allow instructors or faculty to do it, we don't open it up that way. We do it mediated. Yeah. With the request I mean, form. And in my experience as a liaison, um, and other liaisons might have different experiences, they usually just send me a list, you know, mm -hmm. of films, and then I just go in and see if it's in, you know, mm -hmm. these different systems. Um, yeah. You know, and I usually make them like a Google Doc or now a Microsoft Word document online where I'm just like, okay, here's the link to the Swank form, you know, okay. or I like, Mm -hmm. put them all together and I say you're gonna have to fill out a swank form for all of these five um canopy here's the individual links to the forms to fill out you yeah. know et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um so I don't know uh if that's the right system but that's what I do um and yeah. Leah's saying that she does that as well um that's what Leah I do also too. <laughs> asked uh yeah that's what, I don't think there's like other <laughs> secrets um and I'm sorry my we looked so hard for camps for my kids this week <laughs> but they're home and my husband's home, uh, you know, watching them. So if you hear them, they're getting ready to go to wet and wild. Uh, so I apologize. Um, but uh, Leah asked about, um, it's okay for any UNCG student or employee to get into the platforms that are available to them, like Canopy or Avon or Films on Demand, and use as much however they want. There will be no big surprise bills for the library, correct? Okay. Um with Avon and Films on Demand, that's a subscription product. So yes, if it's available to view, there's no extra cost with that. With Canopy, they can use whatever, if they go into Canopy and it says play, then it's already been licensed and you can play it. If it's not licensed or been paid for by us yet, um, it, it'll have a request form for you to fill out. The request form comes to Michelle and I, and we then mediate it and decide, you know, whether we're going to purchase or not, or see if it's some available on another platform. Um, but now with the smart PDA, a lot of the films should be available to to play, and those are fine to play if they're if they're already available on Canopy. I won't be telling everybody go into Canopy for your leisure needs, but it's good to know that in general. <laughs> You know, yes, yeah. I don't need to be too, too careful about that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing that's kind of new with that PPA system is, um, or I think, right, is that um, it used to be licensed, uh, like you had to check the license date. That's what you have to do in Swank. But in Canopy now, if you can push play, you should be good for the whole semester, right? Like we had that happen with that um, MST instructor who... Mm -hmm sent me like a huge list of uh, Kubrick yeah. films and they were like all in canopy and they all looked okay. So I, you know, wrote Michelle and Anne and I was like, hey, you know, I just want to confirm that these aren't going to cut off in the middle of the semester because the Swank films looked okay, but they were going to cut off August 31st. So we had to renew those. But with the PPA, right, like if you can push play in canopy in August, it should be good in December, right? Yes, it should okay. be. 
and, and films that we have licensed currently, when they go out of the license terms, they're supposed to stay in the PDA too. So yeah, that we're hoping this is going to cut down on some of the mediation and some of the work that we do and make them more readily available on a continuing basis because people use the same films over and over again. So. Yeah, and um, and I think it has cut down since we started the PDA, right, and for the mediated yeah. requests a lot. So, yay. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I still get a lot of faculty who ask if it's going to be good. So um, we're not, we haven't been sharing that out a lot, but um, I just generally say, oh, you're good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to be clear, this instructor uh, still had, um, like, was having a hard time understanding what a hyperlink was. So, like, that was yeah. my description to him as well. Like, I was like, you're good. Yeah. Don't worry about the link. <laughs> Don't worry about the rest. Just um, click it and so it yeah. should take you there. And if it doesn't, email yeah. somebody. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all remember this, but in the old streaming guide, there was some stuff about putting it in Canvas, but that gets confusing. Canvas changes. I think this is a good decision to kind of pare this down. Um, okay. Because what I do as a liaison is if there's like, if they're having a hard time understanding what I mean by like add a hyperlink or like, you know, anything like that, I get the, um, it used to be called instructional technology consultants, ITCs, but now they're called academic, academic technology specialists, ATSs. I get the school ATS involved. Um, well, let me write that get, down because I need to if, change my email. Yeah, then. you can put that <laughs> on this guy. I mean, you don't have to, but like, um, and I'd have to find you a link because it's they're constantly changing, you know, like, yeah. like the websites and ITS changes their structure and stuff. But um, because of my work in online learning, I know all the ATSs. So, you know, like, for example, with that MST instructor, he was like, oh, I want to embed them, the Swank films. And I was like, no, Swank doesn't allow embedding. You hyperlink. So you're going to hyperlink. And because of how the link works, it's going to pop your students out in another tab. He was like, well, I have commentary, so I want the commentary to be with it. And I was like, you're going beyond what I understand is happening, you know, because <laughs> like that's how he's setting up his course design. Um, so I was like, OK, let me get your ATS involved. And ATSs have the ability to pop into any Canvas course in their unit. Um, so for the MST instructor, I could just get Anita Warford, who is the CAS ATS involved. Well, there's so many acronyms. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, no, involved. it's okay. okay. And uh, she could she could just easily go into Canvas and be like, okay, I see the setup. You're good. Like this is how it's going to work. And and like, you know, language he understood. Whereas you know, and I have the ability, and we all have the ability to go into Canvas as like a librarian just to like check. And I sometimes do that um, if I don't hear back from the ATS. But I just don't want faculty to think I'm like an instructional technologist that can just like hop into Canvas and fix their links. Um, you know, yeah, the only thing I sometimes get involved like in too. is if like the proxy is broken or something, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm like, but usually that's not the case. Usually it's like they didn't put the link in right or they want something that's not possible, like the embed feature, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's pretty, it's all like pretty nice systems now in terms of how this works. Yeah, okay. I used to get those questions and then I put in my canned email. Um, if you need help, contact your department's ITC, but now I need to update that to ASA. Yeah, ATS, I mean, I think so. <laughs> most people are still using the term ITC, like, because um, it's been so ingrained in it, yeah. you know, but the problem is, is that ITS keeps changing things. Yeah, like, so <laughs> merging departments and stuff. So, um yeah. And I'll yeah. also put in the link to the um, the Canvas guides as well. Be like, check this out. And if you have any questions, contact these people because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, you, you, they can contact me. And it, like I said, if it's easy and I can just pop in, I don't mind doing it. But again, I try to kind of just like not blur the line with like course design. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like library resources versus like setting up courses. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, didn't he uh, know John, Sam, we know everything. <laughs> yeah. Online. 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 Oh my. Um, so Josh says, uh, I really like the non-UNCG login option on the guide as a fallback. Do you recommend connecting students wanting a film for entertainment, not for a class with Canopy access through their public library as an option? 
Well, I think if they have a public library card and all, they, you know, that is an option for them. And I, the way I understand it is most public libraries do limit the number of films somebody can request in a, a month or whatever. But um, that, that would be something you could take advantage of, yeah. Yeah, most public libraries now have um, access to a database called Hoopla, and that has a lot of uh, entertainment films on there. Yeah. Um, but they limit it to like maybe like three or five that they can watch within a month because, you know, not everybody's made of money. Um, <laughs> I wish you were, but, you know, um, so and I also, would also recommend that, too. I think Greensboro Public Library might have a subscription um, to Hoopla, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, so. Also, the. Um, at the bottom of the home page, the Just Watch link, um, if, if you go to that link, it gives you, it put in a film, it'll tell you all the personal um, platforms and all that it's available, that a film is available on. Um, sometimes I'll share that with an instructor just to say, hey, this is where it is available because, you know, students have um, access to um, subscriptions for a lot of the different streaming services. And it's a real quick way where you can find out where a film you want to watch is. Mm -hmm. um, it, and Just Watch also will include if it's available on Canopy. Um, I also saw a question about film access. Um, Avon, is, I, I think it's pretty um, stable. I get emails every week of new films that are being added. Now, Films on Demand, which is through um, NC Live, twice a year they do send a list of things that are leaving the platform and they send us our the usage sometimes we can just purchase them outright um sometimes often it's like the same distributor or i can see some kind of um pattern in it and i find that they've gone to another platform but um most of the time if they've been used by us, I find it somewhere else. So we're not really using, losing access to them. Yeah, I, um, for public library stuff too, we get students sometimes asking, uh, you know, for fiction. And I, of course, show them our browsing stuff um, that way, but I also show them the the website for Libby or like, you know, getting a public library card since they are just able to handle way more fiction than we are as an academic library. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, are there any UNCG, other, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to no. say UNCG students, at least anyways, the ones that live on campus can are, they can get a GPL card. So um, just a, push that out there. <laughs> yes. Okay. Are there any other questions, comments, stories about streaming media? <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, I, always, I just get a couple of professors who I think have found me through like online learning because my actual departments of more like health science um, and some education now departments don't ask me a lot about it. Um, like, and I know we got that one from SES the other day mm -hmm. um, where Anne helped me with that. Cause I, I looked in the catalog and couldn't find it. And Anne used her magic and looked in the catalog and found it right away. So, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, sometimes we'll find my name, I think because of online learning librarian and they just send me a list of films. And, you know, I kind of like looking in these catalogs. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, look at these films. Um, so. Thankful that. Oh, the Avon books I'm talking about, Steve, is um, it's a romance imprint of HarperCollins. So I guess there's a lot of Avon. Um, there's a science <laughs> fiction one as well. <laughs> um, I've seen so that for a lot. I of... guess Avon is a popular name for. Uh, I was going to say entertainment, but the, it's academic films as well. So yeah. Um, anyway, that's funny. Um, okay. Well, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, I feel like I gave it that that pause. 
And uh, I just want to thank again, Anna Michelle, uh, just to reiterate what people were saying in the chat. I really appreciate everything you do. I know this is a lot of work, um, but it's so valuable, I think, for the library. And I know it's heavily used and mm -hmm. um, I know it's complicated, but um, I really appreciate this new guide. I think it's really great. And I'll um, see you all soon. Um, my dog's barking at something. Yeah, so. and we hope the lib guide is a lot more user friendly as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's really. I think I like it. I like the visuals. Yeah. I like the pared downness of it. So great job. Yeah, and I forgot to mention that each of the boxes you can navigate. You don't have to wait for the carousel to navigate to the one you want. Yeah. You could just hit the button, and I think you can hit the dots at the bottom. Um, so sorry, I dropped the ball on explaining that <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. So. <laughs> so thank you yeah, so thank much, y'all. And we'll so see much. everyone soon. Bye. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.